If you need help deciding whether Warno is the right Cold War strategy game for you, this video will answer all of your questions. We'll start with a 60 second, too long didn't read overview of the game so you can tap out early if it doesn't appeal to you. After that we'll look at the detailed mechanics so you can get a real feel for what it's like to actually play the game while contrasting similar games along the way. Then we'll finish up by answering some practical questions to help you decide whether Warno is worth your time and money today. Set in 1989, you can either choose an historically accurate battle group from a variety of NATO members, the Soviets or East Germany, or you can craft your own battle group using various infantry squads, tanks and planes from that time period. You can fight against real opponents or AI in a skirmish mode that can be 1v1 or even 10v10. Or there are story-based missions in an alternate history Cold War Gone Hot scenario. Either way, a game of Warno is not about building an economy or researching technologies. It's about tactfully deploying an initial chunk of your combined arms battle group at the start of a match before rushing to capture points, then reinforcing where appropriate as your command points tick up over time. So if you enjoy intense RTS battles, combined arms warfare, having a detailed knowledge of a wide range of units and an 80s mullet, then Warno might be your cup of tea. If you haven't played similar titles from the developer Eugen Systems before, this next section will go into the detailed mechanics to show you what it's like to actually play Warno. But if you're already familiar with the likes of Still Division 2 or Wargame Red Dragon, you might want to skip ahead to the next section. Please check the timestamps in the description below. Before deploying onto the battlefield, you need to choose a nation to play as. There's the United States, United Kingdom, France, East Germany, West Germany, the Soviet Union and the mighty Belgium, with more nations promised in the future. Then you need to choose your division, which will have a particular focus. Each nation has a small number of pre-built divisions that you can choose from off the shelf, so you can jump straight into a match. Alternatively, you can spend many hours lovingly crafting a division of your own, where you are given a number of points to spend on whichever units you like based on your choice of nation. The type of division you decide to create will also affect the cost of certain units, how many of them you can include, and whether they are available at all, ensuring that an armoured division will always have the best tanks and plenty of them, whereas an airborne division will have some tanks but mostly choppers, the best jets and airborne infantry. But at the same time, Warno is all about combined arms warfare, so every division will have a little bit of everything while still specialising in a particular area. It's also possible to export and import bespoke divisions, making it easy to try out other people's or show off your own creations. This deck building experience is one of the key reasons many existing Warno players stick with the game, so it's worth bearing that in mind when deciding whether the game is right for you. When your battle group is ready to hit the battlefield, you currently have two options to choose from. First, there's your classic skirmish mode with either your friends, randoms online or the AI, where you fight for control points to reach a game-winning points total, or the destruction mode, which is self-explanatory. The 10v10 skirmish is a particular highlight and the perfect demonstration of how great the game looks as you see explosions, gunfire, missiles, planes flying overhead, and you can zoom in right up close to see the impressive detail in an almost first-person view from the perspective of your soldiers. Your second option is the handful of operations, which represent various scenarios in a particular battle you're fighting in a World War III, Cold War Gone Hot scenario, but each operation is standalone. And as with most RTS games, the story missions are basically the same as playing a skirmish, just with a bit of story for context. Whichever option you choose, at the beginning of a match there is a deployment phase, very much like Total War, where you have a limited number of command points to deploy some of your battle group and give them their initial orders, with the rest of your troops staying in reserve until you've accumulated enough command points to deploy them. Your initial units can only be deployed in a specific area on your side of the map, so when the match starts there's always a rush to grab capture points and the best firing positions towards the centre. It's also worth noting that before the game starts, some units can deploy further into the map, usually recon units or airborne units, which adds another layer of complexity to the deployment phase. Once the game starts, it takes a while to accumulate enough command points to deploy any reinforcements, which is reminiscent of the Men of War series or Gates of Hell Ostfront. But once you've deployed all of your troops, that's it. So there's also an element of attrition to the gameplay. 
A significant tactical element to deployment is that reinforcements always deploy from the very edge of the map and take a long time to actually reach the position that you want them in, particularly if you've pushed your opponent back, effectively stretching your supply lines. This delay forces you to constantly assess and predict your requirements approximately 60 seconds ahead of time, all the time. Infantry can be transported to the front line in a variety of ways, depending on the setup of your battle group. There are lightly armoured trucks that can be sold once you're finished with them, or more heavily armoured vehicles with weapons of their own, or even helicopters. The only slight exception to these deployment rules is with aircraft. Once purchased, they will sit off-map ready for you to deploy. It doesn't take them long to reach their target, and provided they stay alive, they will return to base to refuel and rearm, ready for you to call on them again. Although you can zoom right into the action, you'll spend the vast majority of the game zoomed out with a tactical overview of the battlefield, giving orders to the symbols representing each unit, rather than the units themselves. Every unit and each weapon has a very specific firing range, with tanks often acting much like sniper rifles. So positioning is everything, whether it's the perfect hiding place for your artillery, or that sneaky firing position so your tanks can pick off the enemy reinforcements, line of sight is a key element of Warner gameplay, so much so that it has its own dedicated key binding to help you determine what can be seen from any position on the map at all times. In Warno, the units are the stars of the show. The developer strives to make them as faithful to the units of the day as possible, and visually, they look superb. A detailed knowledge of each unit will give you a genuine edge in battle, so you'll need to learn the difference between your M11P Abrams and your M1A1 Abrams, for example. Fortunately, Warno gives you a detailed statistics card for each unit to help you determine and compare their capabilities and effectiveness. Infantry squads are by far the most numerous unit type in the game, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Cheap conscripts won't stick around for long when the bullets start to fly, whereas well-trained special forces have deadly accuracy, and the weapons to take on tanks and air units, but they're expensive. Beyond infantry, there are a wide range of toys for you to play with, from main battle tanks to infantry fighting vehicles, helicopters, planes, anti-air, artillery, you name it, Warno's probably got it, provided it was around in 1989. Each unit has a designated role, most of which are common sense, but a few are worth mentioning in more detail. Recon teams come in all shapes and sizes, including helicopters, jeeps, or just two guys running around, and they have a range of defensive and offensive capabilities. Stationing them in key positions near the centre of the map where they can stay hidden while providing you with intel on enemy movements is absolutely essential. Rockets and shells run out incredibly quickly, and rotating and healing infantry squads can give you a real edge in a fight, making supply units hugely important. Some are trucks with no armour at all, while others are heavily armoured, and they also contain varying levels of supply, all of which affects how much they cost, giving you something to think about when putting your own battle group together. Helicopters deserve a special mention as they are incredibly fun and versatile units. They can fulfil many different roles from the recon and supply duties that were just mentioned, but also transportation, anti-tank or anti-infantry. Helicopters can do most things but are vulnerable as they tend to attract attention, you know, with all the noise and being up in the air for all to see. The final notable mention goes to command units, which could be a tank, a truck or a small infantry squad, which are vital as they are the only unit type that can actually capture a control point. In addition to their role, most units have at least one trait that can have either positive or negative effects. Leaders increase the veterancy level of nearby units, shock troops are more effective in close-range combat, while military police instill some discipline, making the surrounding troops less wimpy. Once you combine the number of units, their various roles, their detailed statistics, and throw a mixture of traits in for good measure, there's a near endless list of combinations and hours of fun to be had when setting up your own bespoke battle group. The absolute key to success in Warno is combined arms warfare. You can charge in with a bunch of expensive and powerful tanks, but unsupported, they'll be lambs to the slaughter. Once you've been decimated in your first few playthroughs, you'll start to realise that each sector on the map that you want to control must have an element of anti-infantry, anti-tank, anti-air, artillery, recon and supply, all within range of each other 
in order to successfully defend that area. And if you want to attack, well, good luck, because it isn't easy. But softening up the enemy troops with artillery and covering your advancing troops with smoke from your mortars is not only effective, it's damn fun. And when you finally see everything coming together and working in perfect unison, it's incredibly satisfying. And that is where the real joy of Warno lies. Hopefully by now you have an idea of what it's like to actually play Warno, so let's address some of the more practical considerations to help you decide whether the game is right for you today. The tutorial is split into many short missions, which are helpful enough if you're already familiar with other games by Eugen Systems, but for those unfamiliar, the reality is you'll need to spend a few hours online watching YouTube tutorials to really understand how to be effective. Overall, the game is easy to learn, but difficult to master, with plenty of micromanagement opportunities once you get some experience under your belt. By its very nature, Warno is a short and sharp skirmish experience, making it perfect for gamers without much time to game. You can pick a pre-made division, have a match or two, and be back to grown-up things in time for tea. But for those with more time for gaming, creating your own division can be a time-consuming and rewarding experience, plus there's a dynamic campaign on the way, which we'll discuss in more detail shortly. Although most will play Warno as a solitary experience against the AI, the ease at which you can pick up and put down Warno makes it a great option if you're looking for a game to play with your mates. If smack talk against randoms online is more your thing, the online multiplayer scene is just about busy enough for you to easily find a match, and there's always the co-op with friends option if you prefer to play against what is a reasonably competent AI. The game is in early access, so there are no DLCs, but there are several mods. Warno does its best to strike the balance between realism and gameplay, but if you're only interested in pure realism, then there are already mods out there that go above and beyond for that. Even in early access, Warno does regularly go on sale with a 25% discount. But now we come to the main issue. Even at that discounted price, with a skirmish mode and some missions, there's a lack of content. Some players love crafting divisions and playing skirmish a lot, and that's great for them, but for most, that won't be enough. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. The devs have announced they will be releasing an Army General Dynamic Campaign. And if you're watching this video in 2024, they may well have released it already. The chess-like experience of a dynamic campaign, where your units carry over from battle to battle, is the main appeal that keeps players coming back to other games made by Eugen Systems. This developer knows how to make a decent dynamic campaign, but until they release one for Warno, the game will feel like it's lacking something, which makes it hard to recommend until they do. So, with all that said, is Warno right for you today? As always, it depends who you are and what you enjoy. If you play Wargame Red Dragon or Steel Division 2, then Warno offers a modern, visually pleasing experience that adds interesting new features, such as automated counter-battery fire, but ultimately doesn't stray far from the Eugen formula that we know and love. The lack of Army General Dynamic Campaign makes the game difficult to recommend at this time, but once released, Warno will be a well-rounded game that may well tempt those already familiar with other Eugen Systems titles, provided you find the 1989 setting appealing. For those who enjoy RTS games in general, it depends on which element of the RTS formula you enjoy. Warno is a purely frontline experience that will appeal to players of hotkey-centric games such as Age of Empires, Company of Heroes, or StarCraft, as well as Total War players who may find the fast-paced tactical gameplay scratches a certain itch, provided you can content yourself with the Cold War setting. But with that said, when playing against the AI, you can pause the game to assess the battlefield and issue orders for a more laid-back experience. And once released, the Dynamic Campaign will appeal to those familiar with Gates of Hell Ostrand's own Dynamic Campaign. If you're new to the RTS genre altogether, then there are better games than Warno for you to start with. But if you're curious about Warno, I highly recommend Normandy 44, Steel Division 2, or Wargame Red Dragon as a way of experiencing the Eugen Systems formula at a far more affordable price point when they're on sale. If you get hooked on those, then Warno may well be the logical next step. 
If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask, or if you already own the game and have some additional information you'd like to add, please let us all know in the comments below. And if you found the video useful, please leave a like for the algorithm gods, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.